Welcome back to the Hard West. We are currently playing scenario number four, where we are um, accompanying Cassandra on her escape against uh, the Grand Inquisitor Cervantes. She has now reached the Isler uh, Choloa Koyan, an artificially created island, which she forcefully needs to uh, fight her way through. In the thin light of the early dawn, a sudden explosion rocked the island as pieces of a smuggler cut a rain down around them. Cassandra made out the silhouettes of several boats headed towards the island. The Inquisitor has found her. Well, I told you, we should have probably stayed a bit safer. Let's open the card screen because I think we have a new card. We just gained the nine of spades in, at the end of the last session. There we go. Unholy strings, one hit point. Who has the lowest hit points? It's probably Cassandra. And with that, Cassandra gets the unholy uh, strings. Turning her into a demon would be interesting because that would give her the regeneration ability. Not bad. I like the idea. Okay, let's proceed to combat. Joaquin Perez and the rest of the Inquisitor's hun hun hunters landed on the island. Cassandra and her companions uh, scrambled to defend uh, themselves. For those of you who haven't seen the uh, scenario number three, Joaquin Perez was the right hand of the Inquisitor, the one that had been uh, kind of sent out shortly the before the scenario ended. destroyed their means of escape. Their only hope was to seize an enemy boat and eliminate the other enemy vessel, lest they give chase. The Enemies have been... The island could be useful, but freedom came first. All right, release the boat towards the lake, gather supplies, lift the bro uh, bridge to cut off the enemy as well. Gosh, we start in a pretty exposed position here. We already get two enemies here, but we have this nice little cauldron to take care of them. Um, can lift the bridge, but by lifting the bridge we would deny ourselves the ability to gain all of these big fat supplies, which, greedy as I am, I would want to have the supplies. And then we can flee either up here or here. Well. I think it is what it is. This here looks too e almost too easy. Joaquim is moving in. Sandra also needs to move in. Yeah, and we're standing in half cover. Not the best, not the best option, but like this here is pretty much a no-brainer. Moving up closer, Cassandra is taking another position. We need to be careful about whoever is coming from this side. Okay, we still got some luck left over, so we're going to ricochet shot the other guy because he's in such a good cover. That's two down. And now it starts getting interesting, right? 
we don't know where the aggressors are coming from. But what I know is uh, that I would want to have the supplies. So we're moving in. And I would even move up to here because that's a very... It looks like a non-safe uh, spot, but hear me out. I mean, uh, the only way to really shoot at uh, this angle is straight from, uh, from here. Well, we can be sure that there is no one. Towards any other direction, the way that cover works in this game, this position has cover. Of course, unless we are going to be flanked here. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't factoring in that uh, that we could be flanked. Let's move Cassandra to here. Signal the game that that they need to uh, take another position and not just stand here. Okay, that's much better. Cassandra moves one step. And can finish this guy? No, she can't. Our sniper reloads. And we're slowly but surely moving in, seeing the next guy. Now this time we get him down. We are in a very strong flanking position here. Probably we'll need to get our sniper into the right position. Like, if we were to move Cassandra to here, I'm not even sure she's probably taking a reaction shot. I don't want that to happen. So, might as well reload and kill this guy. We can see that there are additional enemies starting to come our way. I think that the two of them can deal with the enemies. Joaquim uh, Pe Peco is going to continue to move in order to secure more. Nine hit points, are you shitting me? How much is a nail bomb going to deal? Not sure. <laughs> but boy oh boy, standing here means he can just move to here and flank us. That wouldn't be helpful. Alright, moving into better cover. I just want to make sure we're not being flanked. go full cover helps us to not take too much damage Cassandra moves up unfortunately this is not flanking And we're out of luck. That's also unfortunate. Uh, 
I don't want to uh, move to here because uh, I know that there's another guy here and here. Both of them could theoretically move into this position and take his place. enough damage. That's a tough spot for Cassandra. They won't be able to flank her but she's still in half cover which doesn't really look too appealing. But we don't want to rush in either. I mean, this here would be the easiest play, but we're only having six hit points, so we could be taken out by a single bullet. I don't want that to happen. Let's start with Peiko because he's probably... it's probably an easier decision with him. We just refilled his luck because he has taken one shot, which means ah. which means I thought that we could kill one of these guys. Apparently, that's not the case. Senra could position herself here, but she would take a shot, so that's not optimal either. Positioning herself here is not good because this guy could move up to here and then take a shot into flanking. She's already at the best potential slot because her movement prevents her to get back to here. Should have maybe moved her just to here. Which means let's deplete some of the luck of these guys. We have just gained 16 hit points. Opium seems to be rather potent. And this here takes care of one of them. Paco takes some. Uh, Paco takes some damage. We are reloading, and we'll need to kill this guy. Unfortunately, not successful. Damn, that's blocked. That would be a nice shot, ricocheting it into this dude. No, all of the ricochet options are blocked. In the meantime, we're having 100 luck. Uh, I, moving up to here would be nice. Or helping Peiko. Kind of 
Can't do that either. Taking a shot would hit him for two. That's probably not the best outcome. I want to save the ammunition. This would also be two damage, so let's just use the shotgun for now. Well, at least we're depleting his luck. So instead of using the explosive, let's move over here into cover. And this is going to kill him because he's out of luck. There we go. One enemy left. Move into here. To then deal with this guy. Can we hit him? That will kill him. I would like to move over here and flank this guy, but I'm afraid that we're going to take uh, uh, to be taken advantage of. So let's stay here for now. Oh, look at that! Sometimes you find little surprises. Okay, we're winning on one frontier, but this fight here starts to look pretty ugly. Uh, ugly. And Peko needs help. Can we hit another ricochet shot? Probably not. So I'm just wondering, instead of ricocheting, we might just drain his luck for now. Pego moves into full cover and starts healing himself. Damn, that was exactly the wrong uh, side. I was hoping that we would uh, catch him on the other side. Alright, Peko is um, patched up.
Let's hit this guy for five. There we go. We are depleting his luck, and next turn we can flank him and kill him. Or he's just going to run into the open and... Wow, that was unexpected. He almost killed us. Wow. Are you serious? She can't hit him. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we're in a difficult spot here. Let's drain his luck. Next turn he'll be out of luck and we can finish him. I really don't want to take a shot from him. Let's hope that's not happening. Okay, perfect. Joaquin Perez would never dog Cassandra again. Oh, that was Joaquim. I didn't even realize that. Well, Cassandra at the end uh, prevailed and killed Joaquim. Wow. What a bummer for him. Sandra is going to take uh, these words here. And I guess these two uh, are going to have a Mexican standoff. Sandra begins to move in because we could use a bit of a flanking help here. Draining his luck and taking a shot. There we go, he's down to two hit points. Again, draining his luck. And hopefully killing him from here. Nope. 
So this scenario is already pretty hard. Um, not so much due to the fact that the enemies are super hard, but we just don't have a lot of um, items. The weapons that we're carrying are not particularly good. Okay, I like the musket is really good. There's, there is no complaining about it. We have gathered a wound, so our sniper is at three hit points. Also not particularly good. And we're running low on medic medicine supplies. It's a clever position. This here is probably too dangerous because we don't really know uh, where the second uh, guy is. Just out of curiosity, could we? We can't. Again, no line of sight. There are a lot of um, options to bounce off shots here. But it's not really working. Draining the luck. And hopefully hitting him for two damage. There we go. Alright, Peko moves in. Again, draining his luck. And finally killing him. Can we ricochet? Yes, we can. Thank you. To, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Yet another difficult situation. One, two. 
Oh no! I was hoping that that would work. It would have been the most awesome shot ever. Like three, four, and getting him down. Too bad. Alright, we're reloading. Let's see if this guy... Yeah, he's just taking a shot. I think we can move over and then finish him with a ricochet. Moving into full cover. I just want to make sure that we're okay. Getting out of uh, line of sight for now. Okay, he's still in cover. We can move up to here. Apparently can't ricochet off of this guy. I think this plant here is in our way. Let's try it one more time. Oh shit. Well, I did not expect that he would move. Reloading. Peko reloads his gun. And I think overall we're fine. Well, maybe we're not. Okay, moving in. I think we killed everyone. Wow, okay. The final boat was within reach and any stragglers would be left behind. Whew. Intensive shootout. I liked it. A lot of uh, lots of line of sight. It's, the line of sight in this game is not as well designed as in XCOM. It's really not as intuitive. Ricardo La Fortuna was the protector's most dangerous rival. His fleet blockaded their ultimate destination. Any vessel that attempted to get by would be blasted out of the water. Cassandra wondered if La Fortuna could be persuaded to let them pass. Harden told her about a grand poker tournament that La Fortuna was hosting. Joining the game would require a 25,000 peso buy-in. Okay... So, we got our uh, Fate Trader here, and we are definitely going for Doom, uh, Doomsday Watch. Such a strong item with a Sniper together. I guess, seeing what we've seen so far, I'm inclined to use the Snake Leather Boots for some extra damage as well. We need hit points to offset their negative effect, but generally pretty good items. We're not taking the weird Monaco. But we just got the uh, the gun of uh, Joaquim, 
Canon uh, Calvera, uh, Canon Calvera, and that one was pretty good. Uh, Fanning with six damage, uh, that's an awesome gun. We're definitely going to keep it. We can get rid of the coca leaves. We do not need them. And the shop now hosts Canon uh, uh, Calavera as well. So we're buying a second one. Like that gun is really, really, really good. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. The only hospital in the region was uh, housed in a Catholic mission and stuffed by nuns. The mother superior greeted Cassandra and her companions verily. Well, we don't need to heal because uh, the injuries that we've taken will turn out to be scars very soon. Uh, so we are asking for medical supplies. Uh, the mother explained that the only medication she has were in large supply was a powerful laxative potion. She handed over a tall green bottle with a label and promised the content uh, included instant uh, intestinal alacrity. Well, let's try that potion. Okay, I think we're. it's worthwhile taking a look which cards uh, we just received and also how we're splitting up the, diff uh, the different um, items. I think Peiko could definitely use the snake leather boots with 10 hit points. He's more than okay. So giving him uh, plus one damage really helps him. Also, his fanning revolver can be... Uh, exchange for uh, Cannon Calavera, which is now his new go-to weapon, I suppose. We can also give him some dried healing herbs. The nail bomb is okay, but uh, it is okay. It's not not more and not less than that. So we do have plus 10 aim and minus 5 defense. Maybe we want to have the plus 10 aim and some extra and some extra sight on him. That could be an option. Um, he has a weapon that deals way uh, way more than uh, way enough damage as a sniper. His three hit points are a, are a problem. He currently has a shredded hand and a gushing wound. Um, so both together will mean if he survives uh, the or if we survive the next couple of uh, fights, he will be a badass because every wound will turn into like an uh, like a wonderful advantage for him. We just need more hit points on him, I suppose and mandrake roots to keep uh, the luck up because with enough luck he won't be hit cassandra will definitely take the canon calvera because it's so good can take a volcano pistol on top of it i'm really looking for a second weapon for her to be honest um, and we'll give her the Doomsday Watch. She has enough movement as, as it is. And with Doom, uh, Doomsday Watch, she's at 8 damage, which is phenomenal. Might want to give her Mandrake Roots just to... Well, she doesn't really have... Um, she doesn't really have any, um, any usable abilities. Her unique power, the Dangerous Sense, with plus 25 defense is very very strong 25 defense means it this is going to be reduced from every shot that an enemy takes on top of it she gets cover so she's almost losing no luck um, if she's going to stand in a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle we got ourselves um, sense nearby enemies with a, 
uh, the king and shoot all enemies inside. So here's the deal. If she can sense all enemies and uh, unload on all of them with enough luck and get a movement bonus on top of it, I think that's that's pretty helpful. I'm a bit worried about having three healths on Andrew. We might want to give him a plus one hit point. Which means Cassandra moves down to five hit points. And Andrew moves up to four. Since no one is allowed to die, I think that's a better trade-off, to be honest. We're, the, the game is very restrictive when it comes to cards in this scenario. In other games we had like way more cards uh, than that. But it is what it is. I think this scenario is just you, you don't have as much funds as you would have with the others. Cassandra and her companions come across a group of people camping out in the wild. Uh, they had numerous tents set up along with carts and horses. There were wooden crosses and ornate inc uh, incense were everywhere they looked. A man wearing a priest attire greeted them on behalf of his flock and said the name was K. Els Pass. He explained that he was leading these people into a pilgrimage, but they are currently enjoying a much needed rest. Cassandra remarked the beaten path around the camp and suggested they'd be camping here for some time. Espert winced and admitted uh, in a low voice that Cassandra was right. They were resting. Uh, they weren't resting at all. They were lost. His map was turned out to be inaccurate. He couldn't bring himself to dash and hope so many pilgrims by telling them they had to go back. Thus far, they had been able to convince everyone that they were still on the uh, Karka, uh, Kalaka Shrine Trail, which he secretly tried to figure out where it was. Now he was losing hope of ever finding it. Um, Kaya Elspeth explained uh, that the Kalaka Shrine uh, was a pre-Columbian ritual site that contained uh, carved figures of human skulls adored with uh, Christian symbols, crosses, three corn uh, symbols, and fish. According to Elspeth, the existing of these symbols confirmed that the Christianity was the world's sole true religion. Unfortunately, however, the map he'd bought from a merchant in the in Adelaide had uh, proved false. Now he would need to admit his failure and destroy the face of uh, and resolve of his flock. Unless a true map was found, Cassandra uh, finished what he was thinking. Elspeth nodded. Eventually, he promised to share his supplies with Cassandra if she found the map. He had heard that um, Garcia Familia family liberal. Um, a library might contain clues to the shrine's location. Okay. Let's visit uh, that shrine, shall we? Matron uh, Pulqueria Almiria Garcia Pimentel was one of the last venerable Garcia Pimentel clan members which has flourished in the new world for hundreds of years. Now the family was a shadow of its former glory, but the Garcia Pimentel library remained the greatest and most complete collection of works in the new world and the rise of Mexico. And Madame Garcia Pimentel joyfully greeted Lydia, as Cassandra has been introduced herself and guessed um, she was here to see the fabled library. Cassandra nodded, hoping she could find uh, the shrine in the books. The metro nodded and led her inside. Uh, they were joined by a scrawny figure in clothes that has once been a very fine, um, but were clearly showing there were. Matron Gassir Pimentel said uh, this was her son, uh, Porfiri, uh, Porfirio, and that he would uh, be their guide in the library. Cassandra courtesies taking a closer look at the young man. On top of a uh, hunched, uh, scorny body sat a large head with a bulging lamp in the middle of his forehead. His skin was mottled and unnaturally looking. He inclined his head slightly at all times. As they walked into the library, um, portfolio to uh, uh, Porfirio told Cassandra about various landmarks in the area, spotting an endless stream of historical facts interrupted only by his slight stutter. 
Although at first he seemed uh, consumed by his study of history, Cassandra soon realized his trembling hands, uh, darting eyes and uh, blush meant something completely different. He was attempting to court her. In another context, uh, it might have been an endearing, but she was unsettled by the cold lump she felt in her stomach. Por, uh, Porfirio broke her reflections and asked whether uh, there was anything in particular she wanted to hear about, and she said the, the shrine. According to Provolia, the Cassandra Shrine was the crown jewel of the area's historical attractions, believed to have been built long before the first Europeans set first, uh, foot in the New World. It contains several painted schools, uh, sculptures called the uh, Calacas. Uh, that in uh, expeditably bore ancient Christian symbols. The shrine was uh, considered by many as the ultimate uh, confirmation that Christianity was the world's true one religion. There had been a minor military struggle over who controlled it, with the winner doing their utmost to camouflage its position. When uh, they met the downfall, however, its precise location was lost in history. At the last uh, sentence, portfolio, uh, Porfirio, he formed lips twisted in what Cassandra interpreted as an approximation of a smile. The young man looked away shyly as Cassandra pressed and nodded his deformed head in conformation. He said he would tell Cassandra the location in exchange for a kiss. Wow, really? Cassandra uh, um, caressing his cheek and fluttering with her eyelashes. She promised she would do it as long as he told her uh, her first. Well, here's the deal. Cassandra doesn't like to be played, um, but she knows how to use her female weapons. So she's promising it. Um, and she's not going to have it. The young man gaze turns from a superficial to anger and smile. He said Cassandra had worn out her welcome and motioned her to and her companions to leave. Cassandra's plan to leave the Garcia residence. Hesley was uh, confounded when she reached the foyer. Hayden laid unconscious on the chase launch, apparently in every end, in a great deal of brandy. Lady Garcia Pimentel opened her mouth to say something, but closed it again when her eyes met her son's. Cassandra told her companion to carry Hardin out, and they left immediately. Porifurio shouted uh, that uh, they were forbidden to leave and pulled a gun from a drawer, but before he could uh, uh, train it on Cassandra, he and his mother were shot dead. Cassandra looked up to see smoke, um, winding upwards from Peiko's guns. Well, that escalated quickly. I think she was uh, so foreseeing. How couldn't she foresee that uh, by, uh, by not giving him a kiss, she kind of ruined the whole scenery. They were qu quickly leaving the scene of the carnage, knowing that the authorities uh, would hear about this and investigate. Well, good job, guys. You just killed innocent bystanders. Good fucking job. Cassandra and her companions arrived at the fable Kalkana Shrine, built into the cliff sides. Uh, the pieces of the masonry hanging from the entrance indicated that the river had been eaten away the land for some time and was now biting into the actual construction. Getting inside would be quite dangerous, um, but we're doing it. After struggling with the ropes, the uh, party entered in the mouth of the Moodley Tunnel into complete darkness. The floor stuttered with a constant vibration and these clattered sounds uh, that sound like a thousand uh, crustaceans skittering across stone. They then emerged into a bigger room where two narrow rays of light uh, sifted uh, from the surface. The shrine looked ancient and uh, distinguished apart from the skulls decorating with Christian symbols that lay everywhere this must, uh, this must be the Calicas. Uh, the Calicas. Cassandra asked Harden to pack the Calicas. Cassandra could bring, uh, couldn't bring it herself to destroy the historian uh, curiosity. No, we're packing it in. 
hard and squeezed past Cassidra into the small room and started carefully packing the uh, Kalikas into his sack. All of uh, all the while, Cassandra looked around for signs of danger. She was almost disappointed to not find any poison darts, giant rolling stones, or a rabbit's beast to pu punish their crime. Shortly, Hardrim uh, reported he was done and were deciding to leave. Not only did we just kill innocent uh, people over uh, uh, the an escalated fight, we're now um, beginning to uh, to uh, to steal cultural artifacts, uh, which is probably as bad. They were barely out of the tunnel when the earth beneath the feet trembled and a large section of the cleft fell into the water. The entrance of the Clinius Shrine has collapsed. It would take serious excavation to get back inside. They thanked the heaven for sparing their lives and left. Well, here you go, buddy. Key Alphas was visibly shaken. He told the long day spent looking for the shrine and the sadness of the pilgrimage. None of them would be able to admire the wondrous glory of the ancient Calca's proof of the Christian supremacy. Cassandra saw through his deception and called him for wanting to steal the figures. To Cassandra's surprise, Elspeth instantly dropped his egg and dried the tears. In hushed tones, he admitted he'd scammed his fellows into funding his expedi uh, expedition here. He said the Calcas were worth a fortune and that um, he had a buyer lined up for him. If the Calcas were lost, however, his effort would be for nothing. Well, we may be able to uh, sell it. Um, he's offering us 12,000 and we're saying no thank you. Wow. Adelante. The busting town of Adelante was full of new buildings and prosperous people. The coping construction work uh, in the town was uh, sponsored almost single-handedly by Mr. La Fortuna. Um, for the denizens of the Western Territory, La Fortuna was uh, the embodiment of prosperity and modern uh, modernity. Um, Cassandra entered uh, the cantina. Cassandra was pleasantly surprised. Reviewed the latest headlines. Cassandra brushed out um, the law um, had been minor, it seemed. They found only a small note about the events she had been involved in. All right. Cassandra visited the general store. Let's browse the wares before we start dealing with the Kalakas. We're still looking for a second gun for Cassandra and yeah, we definitely need some uh, some more supplies. Here we do have um, an interesting gun, the revolver rifle. I think we're going to get that again. The reason why I say it's interesting is uh, combined with the extra damage from uh, the uh, from our trinket, it's actually dealing five damage and two shots per round are pretty good. We're taking all of the vitality elixirs that we can find. Mandrake roots also are fine. Wait a second, Vitality ex Elixir, Grand Healing over time, no, no, no. We want Healing Elixirs. Well, let's take both. Six Shooter, a bit of cash, and we should be good to go.
Now, with her additional Doomsday Watch for the extra damage, her revolver um, rifle actually makes a lot of sense. She can shoot twice with it. Now, that's going to be a very, very good addition. Good. I finally think uh, that we have um, started to get good equipment. So let's open the uh, the cards. We got a new one for for the massacre, which is the Joker, hit points, uh, defense, and luck, which I think we're giving to our sniper. So he's up to five hit points again. And you now probably we're just gonna go with that here. That's a pair. He has plus four movement. Cassandra is up to six hit points. Yeah, I think that's fine. He's at 50 aim. Gosh, their aim is so low. Okay, let's continue in Atalante. General Store, Cassandra discreetly let it known that she has a set of Kalakas to sell. The Propyria, Mr. Edorgo Oxabi, looked at her um, right to left uh, from his door before changing his sign to close. Then he involved Cassandra into the back room, a grave expression on his face. He told her that the possession of these figures was a vile crime and that as a lawful citizen he was obliged to take uh, them from her and give them to the rightful owners. Cassandra replied that now that Mr. Oxaby was the vile owner of these sacred figures, she, he would uh, have to pay for her silence. Cassandra has decided not to sell uh, the uh, Calicas and she just left. I think we can get more than 12,000 for them. When Cassandra told Hardy they should find the Bordello, his eyes um, lit with an unsavory glory. Um, her head was already starting to ache, and it was only a matter of time before it dulled with pain for the hours um, or even days. They arrived at the border, time to witness a violent quarrel. An older, flamboyantly dressed woman beating an Indian prostitute with a billy club. Cassandra guessed the older woman was the border's uh, madam. Hardin started, stared at the scene, frozen for a moment. An instant later, Hardin rushed at the madam, uh, lending a full force punch in the middle of her face with a crunch as she sprawled on the floor, dazed and screaming. Harden rushed to the native woman, helping her up. She hugged him as she cried, covering him with kisses on the way um, that, uh, with kisses in a way that uh, suggested they would have more than a passing familiarity with one another. Harden motioned Cassandra to get out of sight. They ducked into the nearest back, uh, um, back street. Harden and his native uh, uh, companions joined Cassandra as soon as they could. Uh, they wasted no time reprimanding Harden for attracting the attention of the entire town, doubtless the authorities. Harden explained that he had no choice. It was his duty to uh, defend Felicia. Apparently, they had known one another for some time. Cassandra guessed Harden was one of her regulars. Felicia <laughs> apologized for the trouble, uh, but said without her job, she had nowhere to go. Cassandra knew that accepting this woman into the team would attract unwanted attention, but decided to do so anyways, because fuck it, we need a forced team member. Felicia thanked Cassandra profoundly and promised her to be a valuable asset. And we are now already catching a lot of attention, way too much attention. There is a Mexican army fort up here. The team arrived at the American army stronghold on the Western Territory. The terrain was challenging and uh, progress had been slowly. They were graceful for the respite Harden offered uh, to buddy up the grunts. He said he'd, uh, uh, he'd see what they knew and maybe some of them uh, and, and maybe win some of their money. 
Okay. Commander Alberto G. Barbola Buruco greeted Cassandra gallantly and offered refreshments. He excused his humble surroundings, explaining that the order was maintaining in, uh, in this region and the private militias of wealthy industrials such as Ricardo La Fortuna. Consequently, the Mexican military had only a minor presence in this area. Um, Cassandra asked how it was possible that someone like Fortuna uh, to, to blockade the competitive assets, or we can... Follow the rumbling noises. He got up from his desk, looked through the window, and Cassandra joining him. Harden was crawling with a soldier. The commander excused himself, leaving Cassandra in the room alone. Cassandra looked for information about her own exploits. It took Cassandra a good while to skim up the files. There was nothing major yet. Um, she stole the incriminating files. Cassandra could hear the commander step in the corridor. She hastily closed everything and leaped back onto her seat. The commander walked in, visibly upset. He explained Harden had got into trouble playing dice, but that uh, he would overlook it as the soldiers shouldn't have engaged in gambling in the first place. Still, he said Cassandra and his crew should leave immediately. We're saying gracefully, thank you. Harden bruised, um, uh, bruised uh, countenance told the tale of his gambling adventure with the soldiers. As they left, he told that he has won some money, but more importantly, it acquired a, a pair of loaded dice. Cassandra skilled hands. Um, uh, any dice game would now be less of a gamble. All right, which means we might go... and sell the stolen calicas because apparently we can't get more than 12,000 for it. Uh, we are now pretty rich with 15,000. Upon leaving Atalante, Cassandra had an unnerving but all too familiar feeling, a powerful pre-motion that made her uh, head arc for days. Cassandra gifted the teeth and allowed the pre-motion. Her school blazed with pain and the vision took shape. Cassandra saw a stagecoach loaded with expensive uh, luggage against the gorgeous mountain backdrop. Suddenly, a vulture cry spit the air. She looked up and saw several haggard birds circling overhead. As her pre-motion faded, she looked around for landmarks. She was uh, positive she could pinpoint the location of the vulture's fest. Interesting. Following Cassandra's directions, the party soon arrived at the location of the stagecoach crash. The putrid smell of decay indicated that uh, the accident took place several days ago. A flock of vultures um, feasted on the well-heeled uh, passengers. One of the birds looked up from its feast, fixing the company with a roamy glare before slowly flapping skywards. Harden began uh, rummaging through uh, the pockets of the dead, whistling casually as though he was picking daisies. Cassandra, finding nothing of interest, was begging to regret coming here when uh, she spied a thin leather suitcase sitting in the dust. Opening the case, she discovered a document written in dark blue ink on thick paper. Um, adorned with official stamps and seals, it appeared to be a deed uh, to a silver mine somewhere in the Rockies. Cassandra um, pocketed it while her company rummaged through the rest. They left. All right, so we got a silver mine steed. Can we sell that as well? No, apparently not. And just out of interest, did did our sunny boy Harris get a third scar just for fighting that Mexican soldier? It would be hilarious if he would like get all of these scars. Yeah, there we go. Gosh, this guy is going to be a beast if he survives.
Ten of clubs, survive a fatal shot. If you kill your killer, you make it, otherwise you die. Well, that's good for him because he has almost no hit points. That's not too bad. Uh, it's probably a loadout that actually works for him. If he kills his killer, um, he will survive. And our new uh, comer has a shitty gun, um, which we're going to replace by the Volcano Pistol. She has, oh wow, loaded dice, 50 maximum luck. Well, that's not bad. I mean, that's almost too good to pass by. Pretty good for a sniper. Her movement is sucks though, so we'll give her shoes. And she will get a Vitality Elixir as well. Okay. Off to the gambling hall. Cardin led Cassandra to the notorious outlaw gambling den. Uh, the venue was set up on a cliffside, uh, cliffside cave in an ancient Indian pueblo, uh, pueblo. There were no lights on the outside, but Hardin pointed out two guards concealed against the crumbling walls next to the narrow entrance with a thick black curtain inside. They found a wide repertoire of gambling tables, an assortment of colorful, dangerous-looking characters, and an ample supply of liquor. Cassandra sat down hearing uh, the range of dro drunken prospectors and listened to their story. The prospectors claimed to own a map to a wreck of an old Spanish treasure ship. Harden dismissed it as bragging, but Cassandra was interested. In his initial attempt was inconcisive. Cassandra felt she was already losing her luck streak. She went on. Cassandra saw the men uh, suffer a violent death. It throughout distressed her, but she obtained no useful information. In a searing pain pierced through her uh, brain, she saw the prospector lying dead in an old shipwreck surrounded by piles of gold. As her vision faded, she managed to recognize the landmarks that pinpointed three possible locations for the wreck. She came back to reality and nearly collapsed from the exhaustion. Gosh. Can we just take a rest here? Sender asked for room. Yes, thank you. Okay. So this takes way longer than I would have expected normally. I take breaks um, every uh, combat, but apparently the storyline just goes on and on and on. So for now, we're going to break here. This is the end of uh, our video today. We're going to return to the gambling dam uh, den and uh, trying to like uh, raise the $25,000 the next time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode.